Slayer said gained a ton of popularity after becoming one of the strongest reroll comps, and in this video, I'll teach you how to master this comp by going over the build, what items to make, and which augments, legends, and portals to take, how to play the early, mid, and late game, and then I'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. The build is pretty linear, as we always want to have 3 Ionia and 2 Rogue for Zed. Here you will replace Shen with Irelia until you hit him. Ionia gives Zed more crit chance and damage, which is great for rogues that jump into the backline. We are trying to 3-star Zed, Katarina, Set, and Kled. Therefore, we want to slow roll at level 6 with this comp. And our level 6 board looks like this, where we add in Kled for Slayer and Darius for Juggernaut and Noxus. This gives more damage to Zed and Katarina, while making Set more tanky. Once you hit at least 3-star Zed, you will level up, and you will just add in more Slayers. And that is to give even more damage to Zed. There are a couple of other final boards we can run depending on our augments, which we'll get into later in the video. Zed is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for him first. He has one core item, and that is Infinity Edge. Since Zed's Ionia bonus gives us more crit chance, we want to take advantage of that and build IE, which lets his spell also crit. His spell can one-shot backliners if it does crit, and that's why this item is the most important one to build in this entire comp. The second item wants to be a healing item. The best one is Hodge, but BT and Gunblade can also work. Even though we get some healing through the Slayer trait, we still want some more healing as the 15% is not enough in most fights. Especially since Set is a melee carry and will be taking a lot of splash damage. The third item wants to be a damage item. This can be Titans, Deathblade, Giant Slayer, QSS, or Guardbreaker. Titans is by far the best one out of these, but the others can also work if you don't get dropped the best item components. After you've made Zed items, you want to make items for Katarina. She wants AP and one healing item. Here are some examples of final builds for her, with the best combination being Hodge, JG, and Spark. But if you are able to get a Slayer emblem, then replacing Hodge with that emblem makes Katarina even more powerful. If you still have items left over, you will itemize Set or Shen. Which one you pick depends on whether you can 3-star Set or not. If you are able to, then itemize him. If not, then itemize Shen. And if you get a Spatula, you will always want to make Slayer Spat. This is great on Katarina, as she likes the healing and increased damage. Not to mention that it gives us another Slayer, which increases Sed's damage. If you can't make Slayer Spat though, then make Juggernaut Spat, as Juggernaut Shen or Kled can put in some work. The win conditions for this comp is to hit 3 stars and 3 good items for Sed and Katarina. The best legends to run to obtain that goal is Twisted Fate to get the best in slot items for both, or Ezreal to get more items so that we can also itemize another tank. Vagar might be viable on a future patch, as Spell Crit is great on all our carries, but not if you're watching this video during patch 13.13. .13. Then I would just stick to picking Ezreal or TF. The best portals for this comp are Placidium Library, The Summit, Jace's Workshop, Targon Prime, Scuttle Puddle, The Sump, and The University. The best augments for this comp are Slayer Heart or Crest, Slayer's Resolve, Vampiric Blades, Bronze, Silver, or Golden Ticket, Know Your Enemy, Idealism, Army Building, Cybernetic Leech, You Have My Sword, Library Card, Think Fast, Harmacist, Gifts from the Fallen, Jeweled Lotus, Unified Resistance, Long Distance Pals, and tons of stats. I mentioned a lot of augments there, and the best ones out of those are Slayer Crest, Slayer's Resolve, Vampiric Blades, Know Your Enemy, Idealism, and Long Distance Pals. If all that info was a lot to take in, then check out the cheat sheet for this comp. It's available for patrons and YouTube members. Here is the quirky cheat sheet from a previous set, so you know what to expect for the Zed reroll cheat sheet that is available right now. The best case in the early game is to get an early Zed with 3 Ionia and 2 Rogues. This is great, as we can sometimes win streak with this board in the early game if we also get great items. But some other openers that also work are Jin Carry or Samira Carry. And once we've found our comp, we need to make items. Again, IE is the most important item for this comp, so I would avoid making other items that use up Sword and Glove in the early game, as the power spike once you get IE on Zed is significant. Besides that, you can slam any items for Zed or Katarina, but avoid making tank items as you might not get enough items for both Zed and Katarina later in the game. From here, you want to win streak if possible, but going for a loss streak also works, as we can often end that by rolling on stage 3-2. And if you want to learn more about how to play the early game, then check out my guide, where I go in-depth on that subject. After the Krugs round, you should have more direction towards a comp, and the general requirements to play Zed reroll is to already have made IE for Zed, or to have at least a sword or glove so it can be made on the next carousel. Additionally, we also want to have 3 Ionia and 2 Rogues active on Stage 3-1, so that we can get specific augments for those traits offered to us on Stage 3-2. 
The general goal in the mid game depends on whether you went for a loss streak or a win streak in the early game, but most of the time, you will be loss streaking coming into the mid game. And a common strategy in that case is to level to 6 on stage 3 2. Here we will roll down until we hit our level 6 board with 2 star Z. It's okay to roll down deep, as we will likely win streak with this board if we already have some good Z items. And from there, you will eco back up to 50 gold and then start slow rolling. If you have been win streaking or mixed streaking, then the strategy will be similar. You will still level up to 6 on stage 3 2, and if you need to get stronger, it is acceptable to roll down here as well. If not, just eco back up to 50 gold and start slow rolling, where our 3 star priority is Z. Katarina, Set, then Kled. Don't go for any other 3 stars as they tend to not help us. Once you reach stage 4, you need to roll down to 2 star all the champions on your board if you haven't done so already. Although if you are high HP, you can be greedy and wait. Besides that, you will keep slow rolling for 3 stars. And once you hit said 3 star, you will need to evaluate how close you are to hitting the other 3 stars. We can always hit Katarina 3 star at level 7 or 8, but Set and Kled will be hard to hit there. So if you have at least 6 or more of both Set and Kled, and you also haven't hit Katarina 3 star yet, you can keep slow rolling at level 6 until you hit them. You will slow roll until you get to around 30 HP. Here you will need to all in for your 3 stars. The reason for 30 HP is so that we have 2 to 3 lives left, and we avoid getting knocked out if we run into one bad matchup. And once you hit your 3 stars, level up to 8 and add in more slayers. There isn't much else we can do here. If you get plus 1 slayers, you will just play the same board. If you get plus one Juggernaut, then you will also play the same board. If not, then you want to replace Darius with Scion once you hit him, and you can also replace Darius with Rice if you haven't hit Katarina or Kled 3 star. And that is only if you need the utility from Rice's spell to win fights. And if you make it to level 9, which is rare but can happen, then you want to add in Rice or another Slayer. In order to understand the positioning of this comp, we need to understand how Rogue works. When they drop below 50% HP, they dash to the farthest away within 4 hexes, but they prefer the backline. Looking at this example, we can see that if we place the Zeds on the far left and right, they will prioritize the champion in the middle instead of the ones in the corners, whereas the Z in the middle will go to the ones in the corners instead. Therefore, we generally want to place our rogues closer to the middle in most cases. Now moving on to general positioning with this comp, which looks like this. We have Aatrox on the outskirt so that he dies first and his passive starts ticking. We have Katarina and Zed closer to the middle, so that they prioritize the corner carries. Kled is in the middle, but he can be placed on the sides to funnel into the backline. This is even more important if we are able to 3-star him with some items. Now moving on to some in-depth examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Akshan. Here we want our rogues to jump on the Akshan, therefore have them closer to the outskirts to make the path to the middle longer than the corner carries. Aatrox is also getting targeted by Akshan, so that he dies first. Against the second guy, the big threat is Kaisa. Since she dashes away with her spell, it's very hard to position around her as we have no idea where on the map she will jump to. Instead, we can just try to make sure our rogues are able to kill the other backliners, which are Malz and Belkaz. Against the third guy, the big threat is Azir and Lux. We have our rogues closer to the middle to prioritize the corner carries, and here we can also funnel Kled down to the Lux, as he will wrap around the Aatrox after he has walked up to the Garen. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they're available for you to members and patrons, and the links to join those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.